We were deceived thinking that those drinks were solving our problems. And it wasn't. Because once we drink and that buzz falls off, we right back in our problems. And then we go drink again, get another buzz, that falls off and go right back in our problems. Am I lying, Anthony? No. I'm not lying. But we have to keep it real with each other. Because guess what? No, nobody else is going to keep it real with you. No other nations, they want to see you drunk right. and struggling right. in society. They want to see that thing. We don't want to see that on our people. We are the Israelites. We're not Africans. We're not Negroes. We're not colored. Spinks, coons, porch monkeys. All these words that they put on you in society. You're the greatest thing walking the face of the earth. What's your name, brother? Jonathan? All right, I'm Uzziah Jonathan. So if I was to ask you what your nationality was, what would you say your nationality is? Say you're a Christian, right? So that's a religion, right? Christian is a religion, but when you ask nationality, I'm asking what your race is. So what, what people do you come from? You say you're black. black. Right, so can we go to the land of black? Where's the land of black at? Well, we can't go to the land of black. We say it again? Okay. So, this is just to show that our people don't know their nationality because there's no land of black, right? We've never seen a land of black, but our people will say that our nationality is black, which is a color. But that's not your nationality. We don't look at color. But the right, you said we don't look at colors, but the Bible has color in it. They won't tell you what the Israelites look like because they know that it identifies who you are. Because if I ask you a simple question, right? You said your nationality wasn't black, but you can go to Jesus, right? What does Jesus look like? It, 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 it ain't that picture that be in the church. You said it's not the picture that be in the churches, right? Yeah. Have you been to church before? You've been in those churches. You've seen them, right? Yeah. So, you said that you can go to Jesus, and you said it's not that picture that's in the church. So I'm asking you, what does Jesus look like? You said it's never been said before. It has been said, we just never read it. That's why we're here to show you the truth. Let's see what Jesus looks like according to the Bible. Because it has his image. Read. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. Bring it out. Says, so we're going over the true image of Christ. Because our people don't know what Jesus Christ looks like. And it's important. You should know what your Savior looks like. Read that. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So it says that Jesus Christ is given a description of him. Said his head and his hairs were white like wool. Who has woolly hair on earth? I read the Bible nine times. You read the Bible nine times, you've never learned the image of Christ. Exactly. You never you said you it never wasn't in there. The whole Bible. Say it again? You never understand the whole Bible. Yes, but we gotta get it piece by piece. Piece by piece. We can't understand the Bible, but we have to be keeping the commandments. So, who had woolly hair on the face of the earth? Let's stick with how Jesus Christ looks. Who had woolly hair? Yeah, yeah, who has woolly hair? What is woolly hair? It says Jesus has woolly hair, right? Yeah, Does anybody have woolly hair on the earth? You said no? I want you to look look at your, uh, take your hood off real quick. So that's the commandment right. anyway. That's the wool according to the scriptures. Right. The same hair that you, the same hair text you have on your head is the same hair that Jesus Christ has. Right. That's wool according to, according to the Bible. That's the hair that Christ had. Same wool that this brother has on his head. That's the wool of Jesus Christ. Read that again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So Jesus' head and his hairs were white like wool. Wool in texture, white in color, just like both of y'all brothers. That's a beautiful thing to have hair like Christ. Read. As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. So Christ's eyes were as a flame of fire. Why was Christ, Christ's eyes as a flame of fire? Listen, it's, it's okay to say, I don't know, because that's a humble answer. That's okay, all praises. That's the best answer you can give. Because as, our, as your brothers, we're here to edify you. That's good, that's good. I don't want you to lie. So let's figure out what the Bible says because it'll show everything. We got to figure out why the whites of his eyes were red. Give me that. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 12. So this is a prophecy of Christ all the way in the book of Genesis, describing how he will look. Read. His eyes shall be red with wine. How you doing, brother, that just pulled up? We going over the image of Jesus Christ showing you exactly what Christ looks like because the brother didn't know. The brother didn't know what Christ looked like. I'm pretty sure you didn't know what Christ looked like. So it says his I eyes was red. I don't pay attention to the depiction of the church. Right, so because it's false. It's, it's false. false, but I, I, false. Get, but I false, believe false, that false. if you had an image that was hanging up that looked like you, you'd pay more
attention to it, right? Right. You wouldn't pay attention to that white, so-called white image of Christ. So it says his eyes shall be red with wine. What was the what was Christ's first miracle? He turned water into what? Uh, water into wine. He turned water into wine. And he drank that wine in moderation. He didn't pour it out. He drank it. That's why the whites of his eyes turned red. Just like a lot of our eyes. The whites of they uh, whites of our eyes turn red when we drink. But Christ drunk in moderation. Let's go back to Revelation. Verse 14. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So remember, we're going over the description of Christ. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Just like y'all, white and woolly. Like Jesus Christ, we as white as snow. This brother right here, his hair is white as snow. That's wisdom. That's his, he's in his wisdom years. And it's good that he should, he should stay here and learn more wisdom so he can get the kingdom of heaven. Hear the truth that he's never learned before, read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So Christ's eyes was red because he, he drunk wine in moderation, right? Read. And his feet. Right. So, and his feet. So if you look at the top of your foot, right? Is the top of your foot most likely the same color as the rest of your body? It might be a little bit different, but it's still going to be a shade of brown, right? So, John looked at Christ. He had a garment on. He saw the top of his foot. He said his feet was like fine brass. What color is brass? I'm going to ask you, brother. What's your name? Anthony. Anthony? Well, Anthony and Jonathan. Anthony, what, what color is brass? It'd be brown. It'd be brown, exactly. Brass is brown. But let's see how brown Christ was. Read. And his feet, like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. But if you take anything and throw it in a fire, what color does it burn to and come out to be? Red. It goes red, but then it goes to what color after that? It goes black when it's burned, right? So the Bible is saying that Jesus Christ is a black man. That's right. But you said you read the Bible nine times. But did you know the image of Christ? No. No, you never know. No, right. But it's in the Bible. If you read it nine times, we should know. It's not, but it's not meant for you to understand. It is meant for you to understand. Give me Psalms 111 and 10. I'm going to show you why you don't understand. Because you can read over it over and over again. You read it nine times. But there's two things, there's two reasons why you don't know that's in the Bible. Bring it up. It's because society teaches you to avoid the truth and because we're not keeping the commandments according to God. He's not opening that understanding to you. You can't just read the Bible and get the understanding. Give me that, Psalm 111, 10. Psalms, chapter 111 and verse 10. Listen to this. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So you have to be fearing God in order to have wisdom. Let's see how you gain that wisdom. Read. A good understanding. A good understanding of this Bible have all they that do his commandments. So you have to be keeping God's commandments in order to understand the prophecies of the Bible. If you're not keeping the commandments, you'll never gain that understanding. You can read over it nine times and it'll be like, oh, okay, that's cool. And read over it, not realizing that you was made in the same blood of Jesus Christ. Right. After reading it nine times, not realizing that you were made in the image of God. Right. Have you ever read the Bible with that eyesight? No, because society want to keep you in a low condition. We don't come here by accident to teach our people. We know that our people are in the worst conditions in society, in the slums, in the ghettos, being looked over as nothing. Right. It's time for our people to wake up and take back rulership. We once ruled this earth before, but we broke God's commandments and he put curses upon us. Right. Have you ever read the curses in the Bible? You have. Do you know who the Israelites are? The Israelites are spoken to from Genesis all the way to Revelations. So if you said you read the Bible nine times, it must mean it's something deeper to what you have to understand. Because if you read over and over and over and over again, you would know exactly who the Israelites are and you would know your nationality. Give me Deuteronomy 28. Actually, Deuteronomy 27 and verse 1. So, do you know the history about Moses? Anthony, stick with me. You know the history about Moses, Jonathan? What happened with Moses? No, that was Noah. Noah built the ark. So Moses, he got the commandments from the Most High God. Y'all brothers with me over there too? Y'all listen. I know y'all listening. So we're going into the history of the Bible. We're going into the history of the Bible. So Moses gave the commandments to the Israelites. He got them from the forefront, from our God. He got them from God and gave it to the Israelites saying, if you do these commandments, you're going to be blessed. If you do these commandments, you're going to be cursed. But let's see who he was talking to, because some people think that Moses was talking to the Egyptians. Let's see who he was talking to. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 27 and verse 1. And Moses, with the elders of Israel, commanded the people. So Moses, with the elders of Israel, 
commanded the people. God is only dealing with the Israelites. So in knowing that truth and knowing that history, you have to ask yourself, well, who are the Israelites? Give me Deuteronomy 28 and 1. We have to go back to our true history, which is in these scriptures, and cast away those lies that's been told to us. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass. So Moses told them it's going to happen. He's giving them prophecies, future prophecies that's going to happen. Read. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So Moses is warning the people, saying, if you listen to what God says, read. To observe and to do all his commandments. If you do the commandments that was given by God, read. Which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high. So Moses told the Israelites, if you do God's commandments, you're going to be set on high. Now I want you to look at our people, right? Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Are they set on high in society today? No, Are we the low, a blessed nation? The on the pole. Exactly, we're the, we're the lowest, lowest on the pole. On the pole. We're the last That's high, the first fire. Exactly, we're the lowest in society. Ain't that right, Anthony? Yes. Yes. Ain't that right, brothers? Aren't the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans in the lowest conditions in society? Okay. If you go to if you go to any hood, right, any ghetto in New York, in California, in Washington, in England. If you go all over the world to the ghettos, what kind of people are going to be there? Black people and Hispanics and natives in every ghetto in society. That's not by accident. That's by design because we broke God's commandments. Right. So he said that if we kept the commandments, we was going to be blessed and set on high. But like you said, we're not on high today. Finish reading that. The Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So if we kept God's commandments, we would be above all nations. We are obviously not above all nations right now. We still go to our enemies for anything we want. For food, clothes, water, gas. We go to our other nations for that kind of resource. We're not above all nations. Give me verse 15. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass. So now he's telling them on the flip side, if you don't keep God's commandments, it's going to come to pass. Read. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If you didn't listen to what God said, Jonathan, Anthony, let's see what happened. To observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. So Moses warned them. He said, if y'all don't keep God's commandments, remember, he's talking to the Israelites. But he's speaking to them about future prophecies. If y'all don't keep the commandments, read. That all these curses. All these what? Curses. All these curses. Is a curse a good thing or a bad thing? It's a bad thing, right? Read that. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So all these bad things are going to come upon you and overtake you if you didn't listen to what God's uh, commandments are. If you didn't apply God's commandments. Read verse 16. Verse 16. Curse shall thou be in the city. So Moses warned the Israelites. He said, if you didn't keep God's commandments, you're going to be cursed in the city. Are our people cursed in the city today? Yes, sir. We are cursing the city, right? Let's. How, what are some of those curses? I want you to give me examples. Right? Just being an Israelite alone. Just being a so-called black man in society, right? Because we get shot down in the streets at a rapid rate. We sell drugs to each other. Right. You don't know this man, right? You see him every day, right? But I, I can guarantee you that you've never looked at him before like, man, you look like Jesus Christ. You never looked at him as Jesus Christ, right? I just like him. You know what it's like. You looked at him as, I just another brother in a low condition. I'm the same one in that condition. Say it again. Everybody had that problem. Right. That, that problem is common. But it starts with one person waking up and repenting and showing a better example to their people. Right. Just because the multitude is doing it don't mean that you have to stay like that. You have to make that example, and you have to make that mindset to change and be that example to that brother. And same for him, he gotta be an example to you because we are the only ones that's gonna look out for our people. Our own people are the only ones that's gonna look out for us. When we keep the commandments, when we keep the commandments, I'll read that again. Cursed shall thou be in the city. So it says we're gonna be cursed in a city. We sell drugs to each other, we fight each other, we kill each other. We the last hire first fire. That's a curse in this city. We live in the worst conditions of society. That's curse on the broke. I ain't, I don't touch that. No Say it again. Curse on the broke. I don't see that no more. Right, but our people I, are I, still I, going I through it. I, I let it go. Our, our people are still going through it. No, stick with me, stick with me, stick with me. You ain't got nowhere to go. You don't have anywhere to go. You don't have anywhere to go. Give me, give me this. I'm not homeless, bro. Say it again. 
No, that's, that's, that's okay. You don't have to be homeless. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. You don't have to be homeless, but I know this, this information is for you. And I know you can learn a lot from it. So stick with me, brother. You'll never hear this truth again. And I'm going to touch on something that I know you're battling. I'm going to touch on something that I know you're battling, but I want to get you out of that condition. Keep reading. And cursed shalt thou be in the field. And cursed shalt thou be in the field. Give me Deuteronomy 28, 28. I'm going to get this for a particular reason. Because I, I want to deal with the brother here. I, I know I know you say you had to go, but I know why you have to go. Give me that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness so the, the most high god smit us with madness and blindness of heart just like i pointed out earlier right you didn't see that brother as christ right but he also stricken our people with mad our people are mad in this condition right wouldn't you say you're mad being in the condition that you're in you hate being in the condition that you're in right it's not that you would rather be above right 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 i got you but what do you do to deal with your problems you say you do what? No, I deal with your problems. What do you do to deal with your problems? Because I know you're upset. Okay, you say you get on your knees and pray, right? Are you keeping God's commandments? What do you do? Right, uh, that's okay. That's okay. We was in that same condition. But what do you do? To deal with the stuff that you're in. I want you to say this. I don't want to, I, I know you know what I'm talking about. But you're about to go do something that, that's not against, uh, that's against God's commandments. You know what I'm talking about. Give me Titus. Give me Titus. Because as the promise of God, we have to see these things that's wrong with our people. Because we want to show you that it's a better way. Do you get drunk? Why do you get drunk? You, you had, I had to say it. I wanted you to say it, but I had to say it. Why do you get drunk? No say it again, you don't feel no pain, right? Because you want to drink your issues away, right. right? A lot of us used to do that same thing, brother. Give me Titus 3 and 3 first. Give me Titus 3 and 3. A lot of us used to do that same thing. We do different things, different sins to cope with our problems. We're telling you that there's only one thing that can solve your problem, and that's the Bible. That's the Most High God, to bring you to peace. Give me that, Titus 3 and 3. Titus chapter 3 and verse 3. Now remember, Jonathan, I'm telling you this because I love you as a brother. I would hate to see you leave from here and go into a coma because you drank too much. I can't sleep at night with that on my mind, knowing that I didn't teach you these commandments according to God. Read that. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. So we were sometimes foolish as well. All these men up here, we did foolish things in our life at one point. Drinking, doing drugs, smoking, Selling drugs to each other, fighting each other. We did those same acts, but we repented and kept God's commandments and been brought to peace with these commandments. Read. Disobedient. We've been disobedient at one point too. But we had to wake up. We saw the condition of our people and got tired of it. We got tired of the life we was living over and over and over again. Read. Deceived. We were deceived thinking that those drinks were solving our problems. And it wasn't. Because once we drink and that buzz falls off, we right back in our problems. And then we go drink again, get another buzz, that falls off and go right back in our problems. Am I lying, Anthony? No. I'm not lying. But we have to keep it real with each other. Because guess what? None, nobody else is going to keep it real with you. No other nations, they want to see you drunk right. and struggling right. in society. They want to see that thing. We don't want to see that on our people. Read. Serving diverse lusts. We were serving diverse lusts. We'd do anything to get what we lust after. Some of us might steal from family just to get a hit. Just to get a little sip. That's the road that our people choose to go down, but we have to change. We have to wake up and realize we're supposed to be kings on this earth. Rulers. And we want salvation out of our condition, out of captivity. Read. Look, serving diverse lusts and pleasures. So, we got to stop serving these diverse lusts and pleasures. I know you got issues, but drinking is not the way. It's not gonna solve anything for you. Give me Titus. It's not gonna solve anything. We have to be sober-minded according to the scriptures. Read. Titus chapter two, verse, verse two. The aged men be sober. So the aged men must be sober. Aged men must be sober. Because guess what? You have much experience. You have experience and he has more experience than you. Because he's an aged man, he's older. But you gotta get aged in this Bible. Right. 
it's different when you're aged in this Bible. You got a spiritual mindset now. Ain't y'all tired of doing stuff by yourselves? Amen. Don't y'all see us here? We, we're not just out here to teach. We don't just come together to teach. We congregate with each other. We call each other. We see what everybody is dealing with. See what problems they're going through so we can help them get in a better condition. Read. The aged men be sober, brave. You gotta be brave. You gotta take this thing serious. Cause it's not an overnight process. But if you dedicate yourself to changing, when you get that urge, you call your brothers. That's what they're here for. That we use these men to keep us out of sin. Right. We use our brothers to keep us out of sin. When we have a thought like, man, I really could use a drink right now. I could take down a bottle of Hennessy right now. Let me call my brother. He need to talk me out of this because I'm going. It's not going to help me. I'm gonna pass out and wake up in my problems with a headache. That's all it is, right? We used to scream "Black Power" while Heron was pushed, but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.